Thank you, Evangelist Daniels. <clears throat> praise the Lord, everyone. Praise Just want to thank and praise the Lord for his goodness unto me and all that the Lord has done for us while we've been here in the city. And I just thank and praise the Lord for where he brought me from. Thank and praise the Lord for just his mercy and his grace. But without that mercy, without that grace, I'm not here to stand before you. But I thank him because he brought me from a mighty long way. Thank you, praise the Lord, for taking, amen, the drugs out of my system, taking the hustling off the streets. I thank you, praise the Lord, for what he's done for me, because God could have allowed me to die many, many times, but I just want to thank him. I just want to give him the praise, yes. give an honor to the Lord, because without him, without him, I can't tell this story. Without him, I can't say I've been delivered from drugs and alcohol 47 years ago. Without him, I can't say in 1977 I received the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. Without him. I can't even tell the story. But I want to thank and praise the Lord for being here. I give him all the glory, all the acknowledgement, because he's worthy of it. Give an honor to Bishop Bratcher for this opportunity Amen. to address you this morning, endeavoring to do what many of these ministers can do. But I thank and praise the Lord for the opportunity. Give an honor to the ministerial alliance here on the podium and those out there in the congregation. We thank and praise the Lord for you as well. Give an honor to the elect lady, Amen. Sister Bratcher. God bless you. And also giving honor to my wife, Sister Jones. My wife is a very, very hard worker, and I have to say this. My wife works a job that's a lot more uh, technical than mine. She works a job that is uh, detail-oriented. When I get ready to go to work, my wife is already up at her workstation. When I come home after 9 o'clock, she's almost there again. And you know what? My wife will take the time to cook for me. Before I get home, I've got something. Can you imagine that, somebody working that long and they have a job of their own and they take time out for their husband? She cooks for me and sometimes when I get there, she'll say, mm, what do you want to eat? She will get up from her position and walk away from her job and cook for me. Are you with me? My wife takes very good care of me. That's why I give her all the praise. Amen. While I'm giving her flowers while she's alive. Amen. I thank and praise the Lord for her. Without her, I just think that my life is, uh, is, is kind of like in a shambles. I'm not the most oriented individual or organized individual, but she keeps me grounded. Are you with me, somebody? Amen. Thank you, praise the Lord for her. If I could <clears throat> invite your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 10. Put your finger there. First Peter chapter number 4, beginning with verse 17. Put your finger there. Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 11. And while you're in pursuit of these scriptures, Whatever you came here for this morning, I hope that your mind has been touched by God. You didn't come here by happenstance. You didn't come here because somebody invited you. You didn't come here because you were wandering around trying to find some place to believe. I hope that you walked up in here this morning because you know that you need some help. Yes. You know that your life is all messed up. Your mind is all messed up. You're all jacked up and you need some help from somebody. Yes. Amen, somebody. And so while you're here, I want to make sure that we make it plain that this is not a place to play. You walked into the house of God, this is a place where we come to take care of God's business. Yes. This is a place we come, amen, to get our minds right with God because the world out there is messed up. And if you're in it, you messed up with it. Amen, somebody. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, starting with verse 10, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are manifest in your conscience. In 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse number 17, it says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous <clears throat> scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls unto him in well-doing as a faithful creator. In Revelation chapter number 20, beginning with verse number 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. <clears throat> the sea gave the dead which were in it, death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
Amen, somebody. Amen. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, asking, Lord God, if you would touch me, survey, Lord God, this congregation and look up in their hearts and look in their minds, Lord God. I'm asking you right now your name, Lord Jesus. You know exactly what we stand in need of. We need you, Lord God, right now to lead in God us, Lord Jesus. Keep us in your great care. We give you the praise because you're worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, chapter 5, verse number 10, the Apostle Paul is reminding the Corinthian church that we are going to appear, we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in this body, good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we're persuading men. Now, let me explain something to you. In theological circles, or in theology, the prevailing thought is saints don't stand in judgment, they only appear. This appearing is for the receiving of crowns or rewards. Yeah. In Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 27, Jesus said, Behold, the, the, the Son of Man cometh with his, the glory of his Father, with his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his works. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 11 says, Other foundation can no man <clears throat> lay than that which is laid, that is on Jesus Christ. If any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every work shall be manifest, for the day shall declare it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I appreciate that. If a man's work which he have built thereon ab uh, abide, he shall receive a reward. But if his work shall be burned up, he shall suffer loss. Now I'll explain to you something about God and trials and tribulations. God has a gold standard and a silver standard. Because gold and silver is tried in the fire. It is purified. Amen. Precious stones are made under pressure. They're made under trials. Are you with me? But if your works is wood, hay, and stubble, you're going to be burned up. But you can be saved in your loss. Are you with me, somebody? <clears throat> so what we understand here, amen, is that the Lord is trying to get us, thank you, I appreciate that, to a place where we can begin to uh, understand how he wants to work in our lives. In 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse 6, 7, and 8, the Apostle Paul says, For I'm ready to be offered, and my time of departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there's later for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, but not to me only, but to those who also love his appearing. Amen. In Revelation chapter number 3, verse number 11, the scripture says, Behold, I come. Hold fast that thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Amen, somebody. In Revelation chapter 22 and 12, it says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Let me explain something to you. There is a payoff after a while. If you'll just hold out just for a little while longer, no matter what you're going through down here, God will recompense that which is necessary to you, for you. This world that we're living in, it is fleeting away, and all of these temporary pleasures that we find ourselves gratified by cannot compare to the glory which shall be revealed in us. We've come to the place where we think that the things, amen, that technology has afforded us is the best thing since sliced bread. But I got news for you. On the other side, there's a better way. There's a better life. There's a better apprehension, if you would. We're looking for something greater, something that's enduring. And heaven is that place. If I could use for a topic this morning from those three passages of scripture, court is now in session. Who will plead your case? Court is now in session. Who will plead your case? In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, the scripture says this, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yes. Judgment must begin at the house of God. That means that when you walked up here, God is writing everything down that you're doing while you're here. Right. Wherever your mind is right now, God writing that down too. You got something against somebody, you got bitterness in your heart, bitterness in your mind, he's writing that down to every idle thought that men shall speak, they're going to give an account for it. Right. It's hotter in here than it is out there. What you have to understand is that God is holding us all responsible. You're occupying these seats right now, and you're feeling pretty good about yourself, about your lifestyle, where you come from, what you're doing. But God is requiring everything, every wicked thought that's going through your head right now. Whether you accept what I'm saying or not, all right. he's writing it all down. Yeah. Right because judgment begins at the house of God first. Yeah. Every time you walk into the house of God, you are being judged. Folks say all the time, don't judge me, don't come in the house. Amen, somebody. Amen. And with that 
being said, I'm trying to encourage you this morning. He said in 2 Corinthians, in, in Corinthians chapter 5, he says, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Yes. I'm trying to do my best to persuade you. The area of life that you're living in is not the life that he has designated for you. God has given his life on a cross so that you might be able to have the right to the tree of life. Yes, sir. Folk think that because they have vitality that they can play games with God. Not so. Not so. Not so. It's time to put away foolishness. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I believe it is, he said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Hey. Amen, somebody. Amen. Playing games, coming into the house of the Lord with vices, hallelujah, attitudes, in the house of God, right in his face. Oh, You're sitting here in God's house with your mind somewhere else. Court is now in session. Who's going to preach your case? Judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begin at us first, where shall be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Those of you who walk in here or walk into a church and somebody's trying to preach the word of you, you get up and walk out like nothing was ever said, you're disobedient. Amen, somebody. If you know that the word of God is coming to help you, why don't you take the help? If you know that the word of God is coming to assist you, why don't you take the assistance? If you know that the word of God is coming to build you up and not tear you down, why don't you take the help? But it starts here. It starts here. Check yourself because you had already wrecked yourself. But God is able to restore you. God is able to build you up. God is able to assist you if you allow him to. Right. Are you with me, somebody? Amen. The judgment begins at the house of God. What shall be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, oh, right. scarcely just making it in, yes. where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? The ungodly are those who was godly, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then they found them in another way. They found an ecumenical, they found an ecclesiastical, they found an a, 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 a evangelical church that they can go to, something that floats their boat. Something that makes them feel good because they don't like to be confronted. Uh -huh. They don't want to be convicted. They don't want nobody to tell them that they got to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't want nobody to tell them that they have to be holy. My Lord. They want to be able to live any kind of life they want to and think that they're all right. But the Bible lets us know that our righteousness are as filthy rags. Even if you try to do the best, you can wash yourself in the best soap that they got made available. You can put all the perfume on you as much as you want and smell as good, but you're still rotten on the inside. You can take a pig and wash him and dress him up, put a bow around his neck and sit him in the middle of your bed. But the moment you let him outside your house, guess where he goes? Back where he wanted to be. Back to where he came from. We do the same thing when we come into the house of God. Get in here and God washes you. Yeah. For the Bible says he's satisfied to cleanse the church with the washing of the body, water by the word. Amen, somebody. It says in 1 John chapter number 1, verse number 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us from all the righteousness. Amen? Amen. So God can clean you up and guess what you do? As soon as you walk up out of him, you go back to where you came from, wallowing and rooting in the mud. in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. But then they left here, and now they come back with earrings in their ear, and they got uh, uh, secret tattoos. Y'all know y'all got some secret tattoos somewhere. Right. Talk about it, Elder Jones. Got all little toe rings and the ankle bracelets and all that other stuff you got from the world, bringing it up in here. That's ungodly. Are you with me? They don't want to be saved. They don't want to be saved like they want to be saved. The ungodly. The ungodly was godly. All right. Amen, somebody. Amen. You can't unlock the door unless the door was locked first. You can't untie your shoe unless your two shoe was tied first. Yeah, right. You can't undo it if it hasn't been done. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Amen. The ungodly. Yes. God is still calling the ungodly. Yes. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner? You see how he puts them? He separates them. The ungodly and the sinner. The sinner ain't never been saved. Ain't never been baptized in Jesus' name. And I don't care how many times you shook the preacher's hand. I don't, have, I don't care how many times you've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost at every church you can think of, and you still ain't no better. 
because that's not it. The blood is in the name. You got to be baptized in his name. So the sinner man ain't never been saved. If you ain't never been baptized, today can be your day. If you've never had your sins washed away in the blood, today can be your day. Somebody. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God keep the committing of their souls to him and well done as a faithful creator. Those of you who have committed yourself, keep yourself in the love of God. It care, you can care less what some folks say about you wearing a dress every time they see you. Wear your dress, sister. My love. You ain't all dooted up and all tatted up and all made up. That's why they call it makeup. You got to make up a face. Ain't satisfied with the one you got. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Hello. Tight, but it's right. <laughs> Wherefore, let them who suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls unto him in well-doing as a faithful creator. Peter puts it up like this. <clears throat> I went to Peter. Let me go to uh, Revelation chapter number uh, one, chapter number uh, 20, verse number 11. It says, For I saw a great white throne, yeah. and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and the heaven is fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead stand before God, both small and great. Amen, somebody. You know who the small is? Little bitty fellas like me. I'm a little peon. I ain't nobody. Don't nobody know me from nowhere. I ain't never done nothing significant in my life. Don't nobody know me but my wife, my children, my friends, y'all up in here. All right. And folk that I work with or work on <clears throat> at my job. But I don't, I ain't nobody. But I got one thing. I've been baptized in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm striving every day to be in that number. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> you know who the great is? The great are the ones that y'all idolize. You got them on your walls in your house. Yeah. The musicians, the, the, the comedians, the sports figures, all, the, all those individuals that y'all idolize. You got them sitting up there on your, in, in your household. You got pictures of them. Can't wait to get an autograph from them. Those are those who are known all over the world. Yeah. That's the great. Yeah. You know them. They know him. The whole world knows them. I tell you what, if you miss your opportunity to get a picture with him and, a, and, and, and an autograph, stand in the line with him. Amen? Because there will be the great and the small standing in line. You can get your autograph then. Because the books are going to be open and another book. That's it. And whosoever is not found written in the book, amen, the Bible says should be cast into the lake of fire. Now, I didn't write it. I'm only telling you well, what it says. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> he says, amen. Let the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Hope that your name ain't there. Right. Are you with me, somebody? Yeah. He says, and the sea gave up the dead which were in them. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. The sea gave up the dead. Everybody that was in the Titanic, they're coming up out of there. Amen, somebody. Every boat, every submarine, every ship, every plane that ever crashed in the ocean, he's coming up out of there. Yeah. And that's what the word said. The sea shall give up the dead which are in it. Don't give them up. Yes. Ain't nobody getting away. Yes, Hallelujah. The sea shall give up the dead which are in it. Death and hell shall deliver the dead that's in them. Where is death? Well, every now and then, understand this, man's walking through the Sahara Desert, falls down in the desert and dies. His body decomposes. There's nothing left but crushed bones. He went into death. All right. Stepped on a landmine somewhere in the army and got blown to smithereens. He went into death. That's right. Are you with me, somebody? Walking around minding your own business and a lightning bolt come out of the sky, pop you. You just went into death. All of those who have their loved ones cremated, they went into death. But trust me, everything's coming back on Judgment Day. Ain't nobody getting away. No matter how you leave here, you coming back one way or another. And God's going to judge you. He says, and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life was cast into the lake of fire. I serve you notice. Court is now in session. Who will plead your case? Well, I got news for you. I got somebody who's able to plead your case. The Bible tells me in Hebrews chapter number 12 and 2, it says, mm. Hallelujah, it tells us that he's the author and finisher of our faith. He wrote the book on it. Hallelujah, I want to invite you, amen, to call on Jesus. Hallelujah, I want to introduce you to someone that can plead your case. He knows your situation now. He knows that you are dealing with drugs and alcohol. Huh? He knows that you're down and out and don't know how, amen, to turn your life around. I've got somebody, somebody. who knows your name. He knows your case. Yeah. He knows all about you. Yeah. 
And all he wants to do is get you or give you an opportunity to come up out of your sin, come up out of your transgressions, come up out of your iniquity. If you're dealing with mind problems, amen, you feel like you got mental problems, God's got a remedy for that situation. Right. Or it would be somebody. I want to introduce you to someone that can take care of your case. Right. Some of you are dealing with, hallelujah, some death-defying situations. You're a drug dealer or a hustler like I used to be. But God is able, he's able to dig, take you out of that lifestyle, change you around. Somebody said he picked me up, turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. Yes. Mm, I want you to know there is a God somewhere that's able to help you in your situation. Can I, hallelujah, can I introduce you to Jesus? And I'm not talking about the Jesus that they talk about. Quote unquote, yeah. I'm talking about the real one, the one that's able, amen, to save you from a devil's hell, the one that's able to bless you with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, a language you ain't never learned before, a level you, a language you never knew before. There's power in that name. There's power in the blood, and He wants to be able to save you from yourself. Yes. Why in the world would you allow yourself? To get trapped in a world that offers you nothing but death. Why would you allow your mind to get trapped in a world that offers you nothing but pain and misery? When there is a God who's willing uh, to help you come to your come to yourself, come to your senses. My mind, hallelujah, it goes back to the prodigal son. Even though he left, uh, he came to himself. He had enough sense to say, I know my father. He's got enough room to spare. I'm just going back to him so that I can get back into the family. Are you with me, somebody? God is trying to call you out of your willful way. God is trying to call you out of the sin nature. God is trying to call you from doing the things that God has delivered us from. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to help me. He's trying to help you. He's trying to help us fight this battle. He recognized that you don't have the strength on your own. That's why you need him. He recognized that you don't have the power on your own. That's why you need him. He recognized that you don't have the wherewithal. That's why you need him. He recognized that you're drowning. That's why you need him. Hallelujah, somebody. I feel like shouting. Is that all right? I got running in my feet right now. But I want you to understand something. We came here this morning for a reason. Did you obtain, honey, the reason you came here? Were you able, hallelujah, to access the reason you came here? If not, it's time for you, hallelujah, to stand up and ask the Lord to forgive you. Lord, allow me to feel your presence right now. you're not living. Amen. The life that God has prescribed for us according to the book. If you recognize, excuse me, hallelujah, that you're not able, amen, to help yourself. You know, every now and then you get the can't help it. I can't help it. I can't help it. Somebody can help you help it. Yes. Amen, somebody. There's someone that's can, that can help you help it. All you got to do is have a willing mind, a desire to step outside yourself, step outside your vices, step outside those things that are calling you, amen, back into sin. You think you got it right the first time, and all of a sudden you stumble and fall. Hallelujah. Evil communications, corrupt good manners. Get away from it. Yes, sir. Church is not the place to play. There's, el there's an elementary in every school ground. There's a playground in every elementary. Go find one. You want to play? We come in here so that we can get ourselves together. Yes. This is what he says. I'm going to backtrack. Can I digress for a second? He says, judgment must begin at the house of God first. There was a time when we came into the house of God, and the house of God was divine. The house of God was sacred. Yeah. The house of God was a place, amen, for caution. Yeah. The place of God was, it was holy. Yeah. If you passed by the building, if you passed by the church, there was a time you felt something yeah. just being near the house of God. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. There used to be a time, hallelujah, that we entered into this place with some caution. Yeah. We entered into this place because we recognized that God is in the building. Yeah. Hallelujah, and I can't do anything sacrilegious against him. Hallelujah, are you with me, somebody? Yeah. Amen, there was a time when there was an anointing in this place. You can come by here and get some help. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nowadays, they're coming in here laughing and talking and joking and playing. Their mind ain't nowhere near God. Oh, when the devotion leader comes up to sing, she says, let us draw our minds 
in. From where? Where was your mind? In the house of God. Where were your thoughts? In the house of God, playing and joking. No wonder the kids are running through here, jumping up and down and laughing and playing because you haven't taught them how to respect the house of God. Hallelujah. You haven't taught them. You got to teach them how to hear the voice of the shepherd. You got to teach your children how to learn the voice of the shepherd. Hallelujah. But you come in here and you give them the cell phone, the iPhone, the iPad. They watching all kind of cartoons and whatever in the house of God. By the time their feet hit the ground, they don't want to hear anything that the voice of the shepherd says because there's too many voices in their head already. Amen, somebody. In the house of God. The reason why they plan because you plan. If you taught them how to respect the house of God, if you taught them how to learn the voice of the shepherd, when they get older, they'll understand. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. And a stranger, they won't follow. Yeah. No wonder folk are leaving the body here. You never learned the voice in the first place. I'm talking about in the house of God. Yes, and then when the music starts, you want to, I can dance too without it. I can dance without the music. The kids can show you that they can dance and they don't have no Holy Ghost. All you got is rhythm. Flash on display. Court is now in session. Who gonna plead your case? got time to play. Ain't got no time to pray. And then when the devil come up on you and begin to tempt you and toss you to and fro, you don't know if you want to be saved no more. Whoa. I just don't know where the Lord is. He ain't where you at. All right. The song says, take the Lord along with you wherever you go. Some places y'all go, God don't want to go. That's right. That's right. That's right. Cool. Amen. It's time that we begin to consider our plight, our situation. It's time we begin to take a look at the house of God in a different perspective, a different eye, right. a different mindset. Right. It is not business as usual, That's Bishop. Right. 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 Placating the house of God. Are you with me? Yeah. You're bootlegging the gospel. Yeah. Do you know what bootlegging is, right? Yeah. You ought to bought some of them DVDs. Uh-huh. Bootleg DVDs. It ain't the real thing. Here we are in the house of God. Have you made up in your mind that I'm ready to get it right now? Or are you still skirting the outskirts? You know those that are barely making it in. Somebody somewhere is living this thing. Amen. Somebody somewhere is trying to get it right. Day in and day out, if they stumble and fall, they don't cry about it. They get on their knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Receive me back. I'm sorry. Help me out. I'm sorry. I love you, Lord. I didn't mean to do it. Pull me out. Pull me back. We got too many professors and no possessors. Lord Jesus. That's right. You know, all right, you know everything about living saved, but you just ain't doing it. You're a professor. Mm-hmm. You got a PhD in professing. Hello. But possession is something that I have. And you safeguard it with all that's on the inside of you. Yes. You make sure that the life that you're living, you intend to do this. <laughs> this is not happenstance. It wasn't a mistake. I meant to get saved. Yeah. I meant to be pulled out of the fire. I meant to commit myself to Jesus. I meant it. Yes. Missionary Bretchen, Minister Dr. Bretchen. That's a pseudo doctorate. Pseudo means fake, false. Uh, but you are right, you must. Amen, somebody. God is looking for some people who are going to make it up in their minds. When I walk into your house, Lord Jesus, before I start up any conversation, I'm going to say hello to you first. There was a time when they used to open up the church, folks would sit in corners, and they'd have their hands folded, and they'd be meditating on Jesus. 
meditating on Jesus. Sometimes they be sitting in a place reading scriptures. You know why? They're trying to get their mind right. Some are in there on their knees at the altar praying. You know why? They're trying to get their mind right. They're trying. They're expecting something. I don't know what you expected when you walked up in here, but when you come in here with an expectation, the God that I serve, he will meet you here. If you got an expectation, it's like the, 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 the people that was at the, 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 uh, the pool of Bethesda. Amen. They were waiting for the troubling of the water because see an angel would come down at a certain season and they were all in the pool of Bethesda waiting for the troubling of the water. There's a whole lot of you in here that are infirmed. You're in the pool of Bethesda and guess what? The spirit is waiting to move if you have a, have a mind, if you have the inclination. Huh? To look for something, to expect something from him. You didn't walk up in here just to hear a song and a dance. You walked up in here because you want to really feel Jesus. The Jesus that I felt when he delivered me from alcohol and drugs. The Jesus that I felt when he took me off the streets at 13, hustling on the streets. The Jesus that I felt when he delivered me from my addiction. Let me tell you something about addiction. You just can't shake him off if you want to. Huh? Addiction ain't nothing you can shake off. You can't say, ah, you, uh, I'm through with it today. I thought so. And that dick said, no, not today. You thought about it. But you need me. And then came Jesus. And then came Jesus. And then came a power that's beyond mental comprehension or mortal apprehension. Then came a power that delivered me from my sins. Yes, sir. Pulled me out of darkness and gave me. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. When I come in here, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, Elder Sanders, yes, sir. when I come into this place, yes, I'm already on conviction. Y'all, am I the only one? Lord, 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 <laughs> Bishop said you might be. Lord, when I walk in here, I feel a conviction. Yes, sir. I can't help but fall on my knees. Y'all not hear me. My Lord. I can't help but find a place to pray because I'm under conviction. I'm under indictment. Maybe I said something or did something yeah. and I didn't know I did it or said it, yeah. but I need to cover myself anyway yeah. or you wouldn't be somebody. Yeah. You may have said something to somebody you didn't mean to and slipped out. Yeah. You know how y'all is. Yeah. Y'all got the slips. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry, did I exclude me? Yeah. We got the slips. Yeah. But when it comes to my mind, I got to go and get it right. Are you with me, somebody? Got to get it right. That's one of the reasons why I come in here, Lord. If I did, send me to them so I can get it right. Hallelujah, somebody. Because I recognize that every right, right now my soul hallelujah, is required of me. Y'all think y'all going to live another day? You don't know when you're going to die. And your assurance has left. And I ain't talking about the one you pay monthly. Your assurance in God has been lapsed years ago. And you ain't re-upped. I feel my help. Yes, sir. Court is now in session. Who's going to pinch your case? Huh? If you don't make it to this altar after I finish and you know you ain't right, Ain't been thinking about getting right. Ain't trying to get it right. Because you got too much wrong. You don't know when the next time you're going to make it back up in here or any place. Two weeks ago, I thought I was almost out of here. I pulled on a one-way street. Cars coming at me. Are you with me? They coming at me. And they start blowing at me. It would have been different if I had just pulled out there at the time of impact. Sister Jones will still be wearing black. Hello. She's my, that's my wife. I didn't talk about her. I'm trying to get you to understand that while you're here right now, this is a place that we have committed ourselves to come this morning. You had no idea what was going to be said, but let me know, let me tell you something now. What you've heard, you're responsible for. That's Whether or not you believe it or accept it or not, that's beside the point. You let me get up here, I didn't got it out. It's over with. Yes, sir, Signed, sealed, and delivered. Yes, sir. That's it. Amen, somebody. Amen. I've got to make an impression upon you. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm back. 
For we're made manifest unto God. You know what God is doing? He's holding me accountable. That's what made manifest means. He's holding me accountable for everything that comes out of my mouth. Second Corinthians chapter number four, verse number one says, therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully. I can't tell you a lie. Do you know that? Even if I wanted to, I can't tell you a lie. You know why? The Holy Ghost won't let me. Now if I'm a jack leg preacher, he'll tell you anything. So I'm trying to give you the ins and the outs. I'm trying to give you an opportunity to embrace life. That's all Jesus came to do. He said that they might have life and have it more abundantly. You want abundant living? You ain't going to get it in the world. You ought to know that by now. All the pain you done went through, all the suffering, all the heartaches, all the tears, all the penury and poverty you went through, you ought to know. The world can't keep you. But I know there's a God. There's a God. Yes. Evangelist Brown sings this song every now and then. I know a God, he's mighty what? Sweet. Who said that? Sweet. Yeah. Go with me. If, uh, didn't you say that? Uh, sing it. Said it, sing it, done something like that. God has a way. That's my, is that what it say? That's mighty sweet. Yes. God's got a way that's mighty sweet. God's got a way that's mighty sweet. Do you want to know that way? Oh, we offer you that way right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. It's called the way of holiness. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Are you with me, somebody? I would not trade this for nothing. Nobody. That's my wife. I love her. But if Sister Jones said, Elder Jones, I love you, but uh, I got to go. I say, have have a nice time, sister. I ain't following you or him. I ain't going to shoot you or him. I'm going on. In Jesus' name. Now, of course, I know she ain't going to do that. She loves me. Ain't that right, Sister Jones? Amen. I want you to understand something in my closing. That God is trying to save us from the inevitable. You're going to die. I don't care how long you try to prolong it. You're going to die. Amen, somebody. And there are small graves out there just as well as there are old graves. Huh? Young graves, as well as old graves, big graves, as well as small graves. And you don't have a monopoly on life. Amen, somebody. Not only that, you ain't Jesus or Solomon. You can't predict the end of your your age, your age, or your days. So I'm trying to stand in God's stead and try to encourage you. Knowing the terror of the Lord, I'm trying to persuade you. This is the time. This is the hour. This is the time now. Don't delay. We're trying to get you to change your direction. Repentance means to turn about and go in a different direction. The direction that you've been headed in is the wrong direction. You can't live like you want to and still make it up there. I don't care what they say. There's more ways to get to heaven than one. Try it. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Have you got that one? That's the question. Man told me one time, he says, uh, Brother Jones, man, there's a whole lot of ways to get to Alabama. I said, yeah, but I ain't going to Alabama. I'm going to heaven. And if you're going to get there, it's going to be through the book. Yes. Amen? Amen? If there's anyone under the sound of my voice, recognize that they are living belief. They're a privilege. You're taking a chance on your life. And you recognize that the life that you're living right now hasn't been all that satisfying or fulfilling. The life that you're living right now is a life of degradation and confusion. The life that you're living right now, hallelujah, is causing you a lot of pain, heartache. The life that you're living right now is causing you some trepidation, some trouble. And you're looking for the great escape. You're looking for a way, amen, to get yourself together so that God can help you make better decisions for yourself. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice that recognize that they need to be baptized in his name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can come now. There's someone right now that recognizes that the life that they're striving to live, they're falling short, you can come now. Prayer ain't gonna hurt nobody. All God wants to do is save you. All God wants to do is rescue you. All God wants to do is take you out of your situation. And give you a new lease on life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there one? Anyone?
and want to be baptized in Jesus' name, if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, this is your opportunity. Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus by night. And he said, Master, we know that thou art a ruler come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter into his mother's womb again the second time? 